Please remain standing for the reading of the scriptures. Our reading for today comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Let us read the verses responsibly and the last verse all together. Exodus 3, 1 to 10. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father in law the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them cry out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them altogether. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Praise God for His divine word, we may now all be seated. Magandang na hapon po sa inyo lahat, mga patid. Pwede ng pang Diyos sa pagkakataon nito. Dahil lang sa tayo po ay mababahagi na ng mensahe ng Santa ng Diyos mula sa isang kapatiran na nag-work um, for about 50 years sa kanyang upang sinulangan sa India. Then po tapos doon ay limang taon sa Oman, limang taon sa UAE, at two years dito sa two years dito sa Bahrain. During this time, in the last leg ng kanyang pinagbao, uh, uh, that the last two years po dito sa Bahrain, ay uh, nag-decide po siya mag-apply ng membership po dito. Hindi po kaiba. Actually, siya sa paglilikod sa sa pundad ng mga Pilipino, dahil sa, siya po ay isang associate pastor ng isang Filipino pastor na kung saan ang kanya, uh, it is a mixed, uh, uh, mixed congregation, halo-halo, multinational na congregation. So, nag-decide po siya at siya po'y tinanggap po ng Barang Christian Fellowship. Siya po ang italong Indian na naging uh, member, formal member ng Barang Christian Fellowship. Ang ating pong uh, tagapagsalta ay uh, literally, uh, he believed in the Son of God. He had gone to the ends of the world. In a sense, uh, he had gone to the edges, to the hinterlands ng India. Where, uh, hindi lahat ay pumupunta doon upang pagdalhan ng mabuting papalita. At nagpatuloy siya, naging matapat siya. At almost kaedad siya ng ating uh, Pastor Pablo. At nagpapatuloy siyang dumada po sa iba't ipapang bundok na kung saan ang gospel ay hindi pa naipapahayag. Kaya mga kapatid, tanggapin po natin na may kasiyahan sa pangalan ng ating pangusos, ang ating kapatid, ang ating misyonero. Kasi siya po ay isa sa mga 16 recipient, among the recipients na ating pinagpapatuloy na sinusuportahan until such time na we were given an instruction na huwag mo na, na huwag magpadala palabas ang pera pag ito ay hindi sa pansariling pangangailangan. So I'd like to welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Barang Christian Fellowship ang ating pastor, Pastor Arun Anantam. Praise God. 
It's a great pleasure and joy to me to be with my sponsors. That's you, Baron Christian Fellowship. You have mission, sponsored a missionary, Pastor Arun and Yester, as an Indian missionary of Baron Christian Fellowship. Also, our church has sponsored a missionary family in Nepal, uh, which is a 99% Hindus. So, it's a privilege for us that Bahrain Christian Fellowship loves us and prayed for us, supported our mission in India and Nepal. Today, it's my joy to be with you. After some time, I have come to Bahrain, and the time I came, I straight away went to Pastor Freddy that I'm here. I'd like to come and thank our uh, church and elders and pastors that you have helped us to take the gospel across India and Nepal. Now, we are ministering in Kenya also, which is East Africa. I am so glad to tell you that I am a missionary. I don't want to declare I am a reverend or an apostle, even though we have 120 churches, 80 full-time workers, and uh, our need to work so much we do for the Lord in India. It's all your blessing, your prayers. I thank you so much for my beloved Pastor Freddy and uh, our elders and you all. I was working in Abu Dhabi during 2000, uh, to, to, uh, 1999 to 2004. That time, I was an uh, associate pastor in the Filipino church. Five years, I enjoyed the love and fellowship of our beloved brethren Philippine, and uh, I had a wonderful opportunity to serve the Lord all over UAE and in abroad also. So when I came as a promotional engineer to Bahrain again in 2004, middle of uh, 2004, the time I landed straight away, I went to Pastor Freddy. I said, Pastor, I want to have a membership in BCF. And he surprised. He said, there are a lot of Indian churches out there. Why you prefer Bahrain Christian Fellowship, Filipino Church? I said, I enjoy the love and fellowship in Abu Dhabi with the Philippine Church. And uh, I do want to continue with the Filipino Church in Bahrain. And please, let me be a member in the church. He says, I welcome. It's God's church, God's work. We cannot stop anybody not to come. And uh, graciously, our church accepted me. And we, most of you remember that I was with the uh, Baron First and Christian Fellowship. And uh, uh, more time, I have given the word of God in our church also, expressing the mission work in India and Nepal. So today, I thankful to the Lord. Once again, God has brought me to see you all face to face. Hallelujah. I really thankful to the Lord by seeing you all by face to face. Now I am 72. I do not know how long with the strength of the Lord I can serve. But by your prayer, I believe I will live long and going to serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. By your prayer, your support, I am going to live long and serve the Lord more and more years that I believe. Uh, you will see a small slide clip which our ministry is doing in India, Nepal and Kenya and then I will go for the word of God. Thank 
for dinner, or I give you the pen drive? around these countries, Master God, and in India, Nepal. Father God, it is your grace that we are protected by you and your word and your shield. We want to thank you, Lord, for everything what you are doing in our midst, giving us our daily bread and the word of God. And Master God, we see the coverage of the Holy Spirit in us, which is covering and protecting us from this uh, uh, wicked world, Master God. Lord, we thank you so much that you have the consent for us to live happy and joy and to serve you and come to thy temple of God and to worship you, Lord. This is the days of grace that you are giving to us, Lord. Lord, bless our prayer, Baron Christian Fellowship. And Master God, we commit our Pastor Freddie and uh, co-pastors and the elders. And Master God, we commit our church especially, Lord, in all these years, your grace that you are making our brother in Christian fellowship to grow in you, in your word, in your worship, in your anointing, in our salvation, everything, Lord God. It is your great, great mercy for us, Lord. Father God, I commit this prayer into your hand. Lead us, guide us till the time of your coming, Lord. We are in your hands, Master God. It's not by our strength. It's not by our might, but by the pure grace of God. We come into the presence of God in your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 It's a small, beautiful flight clip, not taking much time. These are the states of India. We are ministering the Lord. And that's the activity, person activity, and this is the vision what we have to serve the Lord in the coming days. The keyword, John 10, 16, I have the sheep of this, this uh, world, I have the sheep which I want them to bring to my fold. This is what God's keyword, John 10, 16. See, this is our church. It's for the tribal people. It's under the tamarind tree. A small shed, and you will see me and my wife here, which we cannot stand straight. This kind of prayer fellowship and churches, we start small with that, and then growing, growing, growing by the grace of God. We do not hesitate to go to any extent of the places, the remote areas, to bring the gospel to the people, those who are in not that of Jesus Christ. This is the worship taking place in Nepal. Nepal. And uh, quite a few pictures coming again. These are the worship services in Nepal. All tribal people. Yeah. We have more than 500 people of uh, seven congregation in around, and which is uh, the missionary is sponsored by our Baring Christian Fellowship. This is, we had an annual convention uh, this year during May, and more than 500 people attended this. The church people are coming from different uh, villages, uh, long distance, so they are brought by the uh, temple trucks like this.
सबमिशन वर्क इनके लिए हैं इस पार्ट ऑफ और कांग्रेगेशन दिस और द ब्लैक बोर्ड्स आर द पास्टेस दोस वो दस में आवर सेकंड जस्ट हुआ है बट दे वर पैंट एंड कोट ड्यूरिंग द वर्शिप सर्विस एंड द पीपल आल्सो वेरी पोर पोर पीपल नॉट हैविंग फूड एंड मील नॉट हैविंग सेकंड ड्रेस दे कॉन्ट गेट वन और टू मील डे तो वन और भी तो वे कैरी सो मच ड्रेस फॉर देम एंड वे टेक अरेंज गुड फूड फॉर देम एंड टू फीड देम फॉर देम आई लव ऑफ क्राइस्ट दिस इस आफ्टर द वर्शिप सर्विस वे आई गिव एन अपॉन्टर कॉल फॉर दोस हो सरेंडरिंग टू द लॉर्ड इन केन्या दिस ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स दे कम के फॉरवर्ड एक्सेप्टिंग जीसस एंड से जीसस इज आवर लॉ दिस part of our uh, kenya congregation me and esther sitting there the people are very happy to see us and having us there uh, for uh, the love of joy tribal people in uh, in areas you see the brothers and sisters with the proper dress before that not they were tribal with the, without the proper culture see this all we bring brought them to the culture and we bring them to us the lord and uh, worship the lord there's a mission in uh, punjab state which is my extreme north part of india and whenever we go they welcome us with the flower garden and uh, they these people are very strong adamant in uh, sikh sir see the people they worship the lord in joy and uh, uh, spirit so winning is the most important ministry in our mission <coughs> this is a baptism service in rajasthan and the some more pictures are there i don't know this one okay this is a pastor edwin rajkumar of dubai full gospel ministry he has sponsored one church to construct in punjab state But you will see the church. This church is sponsored by Pastor Rajmi Rajkumar of Dubai. He given us the funds to build this church. And this pastor is uh, Pastor Vicky in uh, Auckland, New Zealand. He given some funds to build orphanage for the children, which we having orphanage in uh, Telangana. This is the construction for the orphan children. these are the children now god's grace they are taught to pray taught to read bible taught to worship the lord you see them in the church they are praying and worshiping the lord we have a old age people in murisa this uh, old age people are fed and see they they don't have proper place so they are eating in the uh, open street See the condition of the churches. The poor tribal people have been such damaged the churches, which we are praying to have funds to rebuild them. This was the church damaged, and nobody went to rebuild it. Now we went then and we prayed, Lord, give us funds to. they built this church for the party family living in the uh, tribal area of the hill and mountains thank you so much can you all give a clap of thanks to the lord <laughs> lord is good all the time god is good Word of God says, "Man is not living by bread alone, but by every word of God comes from the mouth of Jesus or God." We enjoy in the word of God and the meditating word of God and taking a crop nations by the grace of God. I'm blessed to take the word of God to China, New Zealand, Malaysia, Australia, Singapore. 
and uh, all the parts of Gulf countries. So it's a grace the Lord put me in my age to take the gospel across and uh, ministering the Lord. Mostly the Lord is taking me to the poor people, poor and poorest people, those who are not having their proper dress and uh, uh, food, Lord taking us there. Now before going to the uh, tribal areas, what me and Esther doing is, we buy a big amount of dresses for the small to the old. We buy dresses, about 60,000, 80,000 rupees Indian money, and they're taking bundles of cloth across to the Kenya, across to the Nepal, paying the luggages for the air freight and customs. We're taking them and giving to the people, those who doesn't have a second dress to wear, change. This is the love of Christ, what we are sharing with the poor people. Also, we're giving very good meal, chicken meal, mutton meal, which the people cannot, cannot have it. Very poor people. So we go with the love of Christ to the poor people, before giving word of God, before giving word the prayers, this is what we serve to get their love for Jesus Christ. I find the joy in that of making the people happy before hearing the word of God. After doing all these things, we see the face, a smiling face to accept the word of God and committing to the Lord for the salvation. Can you all give a clap of ring for us? Yes, many pastors, many missionaries, what they do, they straight away go with the word of God to the poor people and just to pray for them, laying hands and they say they, they want to see them falling down by the prayer and they give you the word of God immediately, they want to see them accept Jesus Christ. But why is it doing the other way? I thank the Lord for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We go with the enough good things to do good for them. Food and clothes and whatever they needed, we do that before giving the gospel. So they are attracted towards the love of Christ. And whatever you see, they are coming to accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior. I see and I enjoy the love and fellowship of the poorest people in many parts of India and Nepal and Kenya. I thank you to the Lord for his guidance. Now, we are going to the word of God. As we read the portion in Exodus 3rd chapter, verse 1 to 10. Here we see a missionary. Here we see a missionary. Moses was behind the sheep and taking care of the sheep, tending them to the uh, mountain area. And every day it was his duty to take them for the uh, tending of the sheep. But one day there was something happening. What's happened? When they he seen a bush was burning. If you and me see the bush burning, what we do? After a few minutes, it will burn off and go. But Moses, when he seen that, he didn't see that burn off. It was burning, burning, burning. So he thought something wonderful thing is there, something surprising me. So I should go near and I see what is the important speciality that this bush didn't burn off. So he get closer to the uh, burning bush and then the Lord, you and me worship, he calls, Moses, Moses! And Moses said, yes Lord, I'm here, here I am. And said, don't get closer. The place where you stand is the holy land. Don't get closer. Remove your sandals because you are standing in the place which is a holy land. My beloved. It's a time to, for us to testify. The Lord God said to Moses, remove your sandals because the place you are standing is the holy land. When we come to church, are we committing to the Lord, Lord, I am going to the holy place to worship you. But I am a sinner. I don't want to go as a sinner to your holy land, holy place. Lord, I commit to myself for, to you to wash me thoroughly from the head to leg, and wash me, Lord, make me help the uh, holy, and before I enter to your uh, temple, your church, Master God, I want your presence pouring on me, Lord. I want to go as a holy one, holy one to the prayer, temple of God, to worship your holy and holy spirit, Master God. Are we doing that, my beloved? God said to Moses, 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 
Use the surrounding places of holy. Remove our sandals. So, now, it is important for us to, whenever we come to the Lord, come to the holy place to worship the Lord, we should see that I am a holy one. Or I am going to the place with the sinful things, wicked things, which I am not be able to leave it off. God is very, uh, is uh, able, is graceful to your name when you surrender, Lord, remove all my sins. Forgive me, Lord. Let me go to your uh, holy, let me go to your presence of God to worship your holiness of Master God. So, Lord, wash me thoroughly and make me holy to go to your temple, Master God. It is to be done, every one of you and me, before entering the uh, temple of God. Please put your hands in your chest. Commit now. Whenever you come to the temple of God, you should be a holy one. Humanly, we do some mistakes and ask the Lord to forgive. Please confess now for a minute and let me proceed. Please confess. Lord, I'm sinner. I'm a holy master. Lord, in your presence, I want to remove all the sinful area. All the wicked area, all the secret area, whichever against you, Master God. Please help me and wash me and forgive me of every sins I done against you, Lord. And Master God, wash me thoroughly by your holy blood and make me pure and holy to be a worthy one in your presence, Master God. I commit this prayer in your time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, my beloved. Whenever I read this portion, one time, first time when I read this portion, I come to the Lord there and serve and I cry. Master God, when you are concerned to Moses of saying that, remove your sandals. I am a man with the born sins, wicked sins, secret sins, and all these things. Unknowingly, I am stepping into your temple, Master God. Please forgive me, Lord. Here after any time, I go to your temple. Lord, let me come to you. Ask for your forgiveness. Ask for your holiness before entering the church. My beloved, this is what we have to do every time we enter the church. That doesn't mean you do sin against God again and again. No. It doesn't mean that. But every time you step into the church, we have to ask the Lord to wash and forgive us to have a holy presence in us. Okay. Now, Moses, when he was shepherding the lambs there, now, the call is coming. Jesus, our Lord, the Father, he called Moses. What he says, Moses, I am seeing the cries of my people in hardship. My people in danger, at persecution. Those who are looking after the, uh, my, my beloved people in uh, uh, Egypt, they are torturing, persecuting him. They are giving so much trouble and uh, making them to cry. I do not want my people to cry anymore. So what I want to do is, I am going to send you to Egypt to release my people, to release them, bring them to the land of milk and honey. That is what I am keeping for my people. I do not want my people to suffer anymore. Beloved, Moses, they did say, no, I cannot go. Even though he was murmuring, he went to release the people of God in Egypt. Now, in around Iran, Iraq, Syria, Egypt, around the Gulf countries, and India, Nepal, you have seen the persecutions taking place to the Christians, believers. I have seen one video in the television, about 12 or 16 youth, youth boys standing there, their heads are cut straight away with a knife, long knife. Heads cut and the blood is shedding because they refuse to deny Jesus Christ is my Lord. Such a dirty people all around the world to kill Christians and persecute Christians. And you know what is happening in uh, India? If a tribal accepts Jesus Christ, the high caste people all belong to Hinduism. The poor, uh, tribal people, religious, they accept gospel and going to church, accepting Jesus Christ as a personal savior, and then they come to the Lord for the salvation, and we missionaries taking them to uh, church, before that we give the gospel thoroughly, 
and make, uh, making them to understand what is salvation, what you have to do for preparations for the gospel, and then we lead them to the salvation in the water baptism. That's what we're doing it. People watching that, after the salvation they received, after the baptism, what's happening to them, they go to the villages and call them by name and say, look, you was worshipping the Hindu God, which is our God, your family God. Now, why you have leave your gods and going to a foreigner God? Jesus is not recognized a, a living God in India. He is always the uh, Hindu people says he is a foreign God. He is not Indian God. So why you want to go to the foreigner God? Leave it and come back. And what they say, what they do normally, if they don't come, they don't give job to the people to make money and live for uh, food and shelter. They don't give job. Second, they don't allow the new uh, converted Christian not to take water on their common well pot. They cannot take water for drink and for their cooking food. Third, they don't allow them to buy the provisions in the local shops, in the villages. These are the three things they're mainly doing to the converted Christian coming to Christ. Fourthly, what they're doing, they call these people, those who convert and go to church, they call them, and in the open public area, they remove the hairs for the gents and ladies. Remove the hairs. You could understand what actual things are happening. And they do all the Hindu puja and tradition things, making some sand, uh, um, sandal uh, material in the head and some puja, and making them to be a uh, permanent Hindu and to go to worship the Hindu gods. This is taking place now even. The people are crying when we go to the mission, the people are crying. We cannot live, we cannot work, we cannot earn money, and we cannot have our family food because we are not getting job because we accepted Christ. We cannot go and take water for drink in the common well. And the, uh, all the uh, shops, they are told by the Hindu Torah people not to give the provisions for us. Pastor, what we can do? We accept Jesus Christ, what for? To suffer in this land? You could understand what uh, situation we could be. And we uh, comfort them with the word of God and pray. Look, our forefather had this kind of troubles. They strong in the faith of God and they overcome that and they go on to the other place to buy their provisions and they, they find the job the Lord has provided. So don't worry. You know, we, we used to comfort them by the word of God and preach them and pray for them. As a missionary working in the tribal and uh, village areas, my beloved, we face a lot of trouble. But what we do, we all the most, we try to help them by material. And we try to help them in their uh, troubles and problems. We need more finance to comfort them before the prayer. If I say, okay, okay, I pray for that, it always you say that, go, forget it. So, my Lord, but don't mistake me, we need finance to comfort these poor people by giving them about Christ. And then we comfort them, giving the word of God, they are strengthened to receive the salvation and the word of God. God's grace. Lord is using us in the area where more people are coming to Christ. By the grace of God, we have established 120 churches across India and Nepal, and now seven churches in Kenya. And every month, we need to feed and support the missionaries, 18 missionaries working with us in the fields. We have to support them, otherwise they are suffering for the food and shelter and to educate the children. I request you all to pray for the missionary work, what we are doing. As a missionary, peace of missionary, we are serving the Lord in this area, and we want you to pray. Because Lord is here in the cries of the people, the dangers of the people, the persecution of the people. Lord is seeing them and is sending us as a missionary to go. We are not rich in money, we are not rich in funds, but we are rich in the faith of God. We are very much rich in the faith of God. And we go, Lord, we go, and you provide what we needed and to feed your flocks and to support them by prayer and word of God. This is what we are doing among the people. God's grace, we are still going on and on and on. Here in the mission, when we go to reach the uh, poor people, we, feel we face a lot of sick people and a lot of evil-spirited people 
and lot of uh, uh, people, those who could not accept Jesus because of the poverty and because of the evil spirit. In one place, I will be go to mission work in uh, villages. A brother of 31 years, 31 years name was well 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 I know, 31 years, I'm not, uh, not married. This brother having a problem in the throat. We all having a tube, foot tube from the throat to the stomach. Naturally, this brother Velu had a two holes formed in this foot tube, and whatever he drink and eat, it comes out of the holes and forming in the belly, making like a pregnant woman. You can understand the 31 year boy having such a bigger um, uh, stomach and uh, giving so much of pain which he cannot be able to uh, sleep. And every day he has to go to the hospital and take with the strings two to three liter of this uh, fluid material, then he is okay. Like this, six months it was going on. So when we went for village ministry, the mother of this brother came to us and asking us, please come and pray for my son. He is suffering six months. He is dying of the most in the bedridden situation. Beloved, we went and seen the condition and with a great faith in God, I prayed, Lord, touch this boy. He is the one among so much of Hindu families. Raise him up with good health alone and let him witness Jesus the living God. God's grace, six months of treatment, the doctor said never can be treated for uh, uh, good health. We prayed for him. It was a Friday. And Sunday we asked him to come to our church, Jesus Church. I asked him, come to the church, we will all pray for you. He pray of mine. My Lord Jesus will give you healing there itself. So with the faith we came to our church. I asked the church to stand up, stretch your hands to this village, and we are all going to pray for the healing and deliverance right now in the name of Jesus Christ. So God's grace, what has done? We all prayed for him. It was Sunday. After the service, he went home. He don't have the pain and the sufferings. The same night he slept well. Next day in the morning, as usual, he go to the doctor, said, I didn't have pain, I slept well, and uh, what happened? Any medicine? He said, no, I go to Jesus Church, and the uh, priest, the father, pastor over here, and the church prayed for me. That's what he said. So the doctor had doubt, let me see the x-ray of these holes. Doctor took x-ray and seen the whole two holes were completely healed and sealed. Lord, help him to deliver from this trouble. Can you all do it again? The doctor surprise. The doctor surprise. How it happened? Six months I'm trying to heal you. It not taken place. How it happened? He said, it is Jesus. In another one witness, I, I have short time to close this and uh, come to the conclusion. Another one will let me go. Not by go. 11.30 midnight, a brother came to cycle, came by cycle and knocking my dad. Pastor, Pastor, please open the door. I said, what's happening? Please come. There is a sister, newborn baby, uh, just recently, three months, she delivered a baby. The sister is having a heavy fever and uh, she's about to die. And the baby cried for mother's milk. It is midnight, we cannot take the, uh, the sister to the hospital which is far away and no transportation. It's in a very dangerous time, please come. So I said, you go, I'm coming. And I took my bicycle and went there quickly. And when I went there, the husband went for duty, did he turn back? And uh, this uh, Malia, the sister name, she was bedridden and uh, her hands and legs are going in the highest fever. And the baby was crying for mother's milk. In a very bad situation, I entered the house. My father-in-law came and hugged me and cried. Pastor, two life are going to die now. My baby, I cannot give feeding. And the mother is I'm almost dying. I said, no, don't worry. You see our living God here now. I'm going to pray. 
God is going to rise Malika in this now, in this moment. I have the Lord Jesus Christ is more than more powerful than anything in this world. That God, you will see the glory of the Lord, and I laid my hands on the Malika and I prayed, Lord, let her be healed. In the name of Jesus, let her be healed and rise up now, Lord God. And she has to feed the baby, Master God. It is a day the time, Master God. I call upon your name. Come and help this uh, Maliga and make her to rise up. Let all the sickness and uh, 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 this uh, sickness to get out from here, Lord. And the name of Jesus, you be healed and delivered right now. I pray and said, God is touched. God is touched and Maria goes to rise up. In three minutes, she wake up, stood up and said, Pastor, please come. When did you come? I said, my daughter, get a bath quickly and feed the baby. Baby is crying for your milk. And that's what the big miracle done by the Lord in the midnight in the villages. Like this, we are going so much villages, hundreds and hundreds of years. And we are taking place to vision, to vision God's word to the entire areas of the tribal poor people. My beloved people, this is what God said to Moses. Go and release my people, those who are suffering, crying. I'm hearing the cries of my people. I do not want them anymore crying. Go and release from Egypt and bring them to the land of honey and well. This is what my God wants you to do that. It's not the only call. Missionaries, those who are disciples of Christ. Can I see the hands of the disciples here? This is like the disciples of Christ. God bless you. The God wants all the disciples to go across nations and take gospel and preach. Now, because of your job, your situation, you may not be able to go. But the time God calls you, you have to go. You cannot escape from that. So, what's happening? Moses was told, Moses immediately, he obeyed to the Lord, even though he murmured against God. Then he went and released the people and brought them to the land of honey and well. My beloved, God is calling you and me. God is calling you and me because he sees the Christ of people. Those people are in wicked, sinful and uh, adultery and in the uh, idol worship. Those people are crying, who is the savior for us? Who is the Savior that will come and save us from this trouble? We want to go to heaven. We want to go with the Jesus. We want to accept Jesus Christ. Who will come and guide me? Who will come and save me from my troubles and problems and sickness and all this area? Who is going to come? Are you going to say, Lord, I am here? Are you going to say, yes, Lord, I am here? I will go the time you call me, Lord. I am ready to go. Beloved, I am 72 years. Still running like a young man in the field of Christ. Still running because of the power and the strength of my Lord. He's strengthening me to go across the nation, to the climb of the mountains, to walk across the villages and villages. I really have the desire to serve my Lord till my last breath. How many of you want to give the, your life to the Lord? Can I see your answer? How many of you want to give your life to God? The God is waiting for you, my beloved. The God is waiting for you. The God wants every one of his disciples to obey his word of God and obey to his commandment and obey to take the mission to the place where people are dying, perishing without the gospel. <coughs> that is coming to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am, the Lord. I am ready to go, Lord. Please close the eyes. Who will go for me? the people, the part of the Bible, Lord, and we are ready to go, Lord, the time you call us, Lord. 
We are seeing and hearing the torture and the persecution and the people's cry all over the nations. Wherever you want us to go, Lord, Lord, here we submit and we want to go and do your mission, Allah. We commit ourselves, especially, Lord, I commit my beloved Pastor Freddy and the Barry Christian Fellowship and the love of God in this church and the mission of God in this church. Make use of them for thy glory. I commit this prayer and sermon in your hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.